Shutters. And welcome. Welcome to another episode of Black Card Experience. I am Gary Thomas. One half of your Black Card Experience team in Baltimore, Louisiana. And we have one of you back in Atlanta, the one on with Keisha Kelly. What's going on, Kelly? Hi, Derek. How are you? You sound kind of distant. But I can't, I mean, of course, because I know what you're saying. You sound kind of far away. But welcome to another another weekend of Black College Experience. We're here to unwrap everything that went on this week uh, in the SEAC, the SWAC, the MEAC, the CIAA, and our independent conferences. We're excited about today's show because we do have interim president for Morris Brown, Dr. Kevin E. James, that's going to be joining us in a little while. But, Derek, we'll go ahead and kick it off and talk about what's been going on in the conference. Do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Uh, ladies first. Sure. Okay, so of course, I'm super, super duper excited, of course, with the SWAC because Southern University, none other than my alma mater, uh, has clinched the number one seed uh, for in baseball. Um, talk about the difference that a year makes. Talk about how the NCAA, uh, NCAA sanctions played out. Talk about limited scholarships. Talking about the ban. Talking about how Southern University's baseball team 12 months ago were 9-33. and 33 versus being able to clinch the number one uh, seed in the or the Western Division and being able to uh, go on to be first uh, to play a course in the um, in the baseball swag baseball tournament. Now they did beat out Prairie View on yesterday, uh, twelve to eight. Um, somewhere in there, the Panthers did tie in the bottom half, but Southern will under the um, under Coach Kerry J. They will begin the tournament as the West uh, number one seed. And that's on May 15th through 16th. That's going to be in New Orleans. And they also have an automatic ticket to the NCAA tournament uh, on the line. This is the first time that Southern has actually uh, went on to the SWAC tournament since 2009. So you're talking about a 10-year stretch. What What are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, taking over for the legendary Roger Kador, I mean, who could have saw this coming had a rough – year first year of course uh, implement his program this year though i guess you can say the implementation was a success um beating lsu on the bluff uh dominating the swag west division uh that even though they came out on the short end of the stick that marathon i guess you can say bayou classic like game against grambling it just lets you know that these Jaguars are coming to play. And kudos to Coach Jackson for the work he's put in uh, building this program year two. Um, it, it can only go up from here. And absolutely. And so in the East, um, you have Alabama State that topped off at number one. Jackson State at number two. Uh, Alabama a and at three. Alcorn State at number four. Then, of course, Mississippi Valley at five. Going back over to the West, again, Southern at number one, uh, Gremlin at number two, Texas Southern at three, Prairie View at four, and then in and then out would be uh, the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. I'm, I'm really excited to see what they will do in, in this baseball tournament. Again, you're talking about a 9-3, a 9-3 turnaround to actually clinching in the first time since 2009. So uh, Coach Jackson has said we're not just – here to win games, but we're building young men. So, you know, in in this in the course of this time, second year coach, we see what he's doing with this uh, baseball team and where they're going. So, again, of course, I'm excited um, because it's my school, but we'll see what happens um, with this team uh, going forward. Now, softball. I like softball. I know you like women's sports. Bass pitch is probably one of my favorites. I say it all the time, Alabama State is probably the most complete school in the SWAC. Of course, Alabama State is coming off first, um, or excuse me, Alabama State is coming off in uh, one division. Then, of course, te uh, Texas Southern would come off on the other side. But this time we had a switch around. Ed Nam won the top seed um, in the East. And Jackson State actually clinched the first tourney berth since 2015. So that was a little different. 
But this tournament, softball tournament, will take place in Montgomery uh, at Alabama State uh, May 8th through the 11th. So we'll see what happens um, between Alabama a and and uh, Texas. So we'll see what happens on that side once that tournament comes up. Again, that's May 8th through 11th, and that's going to be at Alabama State. Well, I'm, and I'm, then, of course, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I'm just happy that, you know, we're making some noise back in the tournament because, you know, uh, that is one sport that I can claim that Valley has has some supremacy uh, over a couple of years, Coach Lee Smith, like we talked about earlier in the in, in the mm-hmm. uh, month, or last month, where he reached right. 400 wins. So uh, hopefully we can bring home another swag tournament, and I can rub it in my good friend five times, Jasmine Brown's face, a uh, former Jaguar uh, star yeah. for your for your Lady Jags softball team. So uh, I'm hoping my Lady Devilettes can pull it off. Well, you know, another thing I think that, that Valley kids to compete is track and field. They yes. tend to compete in track and field. They, they, they've had a pretty stellar team, and they do compete in that. In the, I think that's the, the – I can't even call what it is, but they, they do. They compete in track and field, and I've watched that over the course of time. So, you know, as that comes about, uh, indoor, outdoor, track field, we'll see exactly um what valley does and going over to the swag outdoor uh track and field uh, of course alabama state is at the top of the list um right now in alabama state has 69 points followed by southern with 43 points and then grand and free high for 33 points and then in women's uh outdoor track and field grambling is first with 55 points uh the university of arkansas pine bluff and prairie View tied for 41 and then Alabama State, which is the defending champion, uh, goes in last at 34 points. So, of course, you know, this it's – go ahead. And so – well, okay, well, you completed what I was about to say. <laughs> Just completed what I was about to say. So, okay. All right, then go ahead. That's what I was trying to. That's what I was trying to think of. Shot put. I was like, it's something. Yeah, that's exactly what I was trying to think of. Okay. Oh, Sanders. Okay. Well, that's all I have on the track on the track side. Okay, do you want to go over to the CIAA MEAC? The CIAA MEAC. Do you want to go ahead and go into that before we bring? Uh, Dr. James, I'm
Absolutely. And always, I oh, it, it's, it's a, a special thing for uh, T- Kayla White. Kayla White totally dominated, and she was she was the the athlete of the year over at North Carolina A and T. Um, she did a lot of she did a lot of great things uh, over at North Carolina A and T this year, and it was really good to see them come out on top. And like you said, I mean they they dominate the last couple of years, so it was good to see her come out, you know, as a graduating senior to see what she did. But it's it, it's been a it's been a great run for them, and especially for her uh, dominating like she did in her in her um, in her position. We are. All right, so before we bring Dr. James on, I'm going to go ahead and introduce him. Now, he calls himself the transparent president of Morris Brown College. Uh, in the first 30 days, uh, Dr. James has done, uh, when I say massive things, he's done massive things. I was able to sit in um, at the Crush Sports talk. I was able to sit in on an interview with both Emmanuel and Maceo, and I was able to listen to some of the stuff that he has done. Uh, the hashtag is the hard reset. The name pretty much speaks for itself. Um, his resume is impressive, and it's a long list of things that Dr. James has done. I mean, you name it, he's done it. But I'm not going to give it away. I'm going to let Dr. James tell us exactly what he's doing with Morris Brown and how this hard reset is on the rise. Well, sure. Well, first of all, thank you very much for having me on your show. I really appreciate it. Uh, My name is Dr. Kevin James. I am the new interim president of Morris Brown College here in Atlanta, Georgia. I officially started on uh, March 1, and uh, it seems like it's been about two or three years already. It's only been two months, (laughs) but uh, I'm having having a phenomenal time uh, serving as the interim president. Um, Like you mentioned, we have two hashtags, uh, Restore Morris Brown and then also the hard reset. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're coming in, we're resetting our focus, our vision on restoring Morris Brown College to its rightful place among uh, historically black colleges, among higher education institutions here uh, in Georgia and around this region and and specifically around the country. And so we're going to restore the school. Uh, I'm currently right now working on... uh, our accreditation and also fundraising so we can uh, do what we need to do to uh, to bring her back to her full glory. Dear, go ahead. Oh, well, me being from Mississippi and then living in Louisiana, 
Um, of course, I, I, I know about Morris Brown and Morehouse, but for someone like me who really hasn't really been around Atlanta much, can you talk about what Morris Brown has meant, his, his, his history has meant uh, to the community and bringing it back, losing it and bringing it back. Talk about what that means to the alumni and the future students of Morris Brown. Sure. Well, I guess the first thing that I want to say is Morris Brown College was founded in 1881. And a lot of individuals uh, associate us losing our accreditation to closing. And I, I just want to say to your, to your listeners that Morris Brown College has never closed and we are never going to close. So we've been open since 1881. All right, we have a very, very strong history uh, in the sense of we are the only historically black college in the state of Georgia that was founded by black people. You know, uh, in the 1800s uh, after slavery, a lot of people don't know that a, a lot of HBCUs were actually founded by Caucasians. And so we're very proud of the history that uh, when we were talking about w working with other schools that, you know, in the basement of Big Bethel AME Church, someone made the recommendation of, well, listen, why don't we just start our own school? Uh, you know, we're AME Church members and we, we can fund it ourselves. And so that is a very strong history in itself, just the fact that we are the only black school in Georgia founded by black people. So that, that's, that's very important to remember. Uh, we set, we have several historical landmarks on our campus. Um, you know, it's very important to know what Morris Brown has meant to the state of Georgia, to the city of Atlanta, to our economy. Um, you know, it is a, a fact that goes around, uh, uh, internal fact that goes around uh, in the Morris Brown community, that if you attended a school in the city of Atlanta, K-12 to, uh, to, to high school, uh, until you graduate from high school, that you were educated by someone who was who attended Morris Brown College. You know, that's critically important um, regarding our history and what we've meant uh, to, like I said, the city of Atlanta. So it's very important that we continue our history of educating bright minds, our future uh, leaders in the city of Atlanta, the state of Georgia, in this region, around the country, and just continue to do uh, exactly what our founders set out to do uh, when this school was founded. Um, you know, we've been through a lot of trials and tribulations. You know, I, when I talk to individuals, I don't hide the fact of what we've been through because it's just a stronger testament of us coming through that storm um, to be able to uh, come out on the other side. And so, you know, uh, we've been through bankruptcy. We've been through having our, you know, our water cut off. We've been through um, having to sell a lot of our assets and our land. You know, we've been through having lost our accredita uh, accreditation. But with, the, through, with through all of those things, we've never closed and we're still striving and pushing forward. And so that tenacity is going to continue to follow us. And uh, as the new uh, interim president, we're going to push through this storm and we're going to come back stronger than ever. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, giving me a brief history lesson on Morris Brown College. And you're right, you know, very few HBCUs were founded by black people. And I think that's an excellent point to make, you know, about Morris Brown. I think it's amazing. I think it's awesome um, that it's truly a college that was founded for us by us. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. The original FUBU. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Kels? So one of the other things I want to talk to you about, Dr. James, and it, it, this is very important, and we, we all know because we look at our HBCUs and we, see, we know that so many times we go through the financial constraints and we get in situations where we have to, it's like we're at the mercy of other people and we have to have someone come in. You talk about the transparency. You talk about the transparent president. Talk about that actual hashtag, how did you come up with that name? Because I know at this time, everybody wants to know what's going on. Talk about that actual title, the transparent president. Sure. So when I came into this position, you know, I, I, I told everyone, including even in my interviews, uh, when I was interviewing for the position, that I was going to do a lot of listening. 
And so as I listened to the alumni, the faculty, the staff, I kept hearing a similar theme of we love this school and we'll do anything for this school, but we just don't know what's going on. And so if you tell us what's going on, we will rally behind your leadership and around you and we will help you to restore the school. And so I, you know, I'm a young president, I guess. I'm 41 years old. And so I use social media. And I think a lot of the data and research shows that social media is critically important regarding how individuals receive their day-to-day news. And so I said to myself, I said, I'm going to be the most transparent president um, as I can be to allow the alumni, faculty, staff, community, anyone who wants to watch our journey from not being accredited to full restoration. And so on a daily basis, I'm posting three or four times a day, um, uh, really just telling a story, the successes, everything that we're doing, um, everything from A to Z, just being as transparent as I can to let the alumni, faculty, staff, and anyone who's watching know what's going on. I had one person to say something very um, uh, clear to me. She said, wow, I feel like I'm on the journey with you. And she says, I'm just enjoy the journey. I had another individual say to me, he said, every night before I go to bed, I log on to Facebook just to see what happened at Morris Brown today. Right. And so I, I'm just trying to tell the story to to rally the alumni behind them, to show them um, action, not just talking the talk, but actually walking the walk with the walk regarding our restoration. OK, so one of the other you know, of course, you know, people, I know you have this coming back in, and I know you're going to have to get back to, and like I, I do, I find myself telling people all the time, more than once, Morris Brown never closed, and we, we go through that, and it's a lot of people, and I'm glad that you say that, because a lot of people, they really don't understand that process, they really don't understand that Morris Brown never closed. I was right. like, it never closed, it lost accreditation, but it never closed, even if you only got five students, it never closed, and right. I remember watching the documentary on TV, and I remember, you know, watching how I guess an alumnus was saying that he was coming in and he was just like, basically like he was volunteering, but he loved what he was doing so much. He was coming in. And being that I've been in Atlanta uh, for eight years, I've watched, you know, I've watched the love for Morris Brown and I've watched it uh, over the course of time. Even in two, maybe 99, 2000, I had classmates that came, that came down, went to Morris Brown and they were a part of the Butler Brown Sugar, the, the March and Wolverine. So I already know what it's like to see, you know, over a course of time from then up until this point until now. So now, once the towers came down, the towers are demolished, now you go back into, okay, what do you do from this point? I know you got to get back to, you talk about the classroom, you talk about what you do in that state. Online, is that what we're going to do next? Is online going to be the first thing you do as far as getting students? How are you working to get the students back once the accreditation is rolling. You know, it's interesting to note that right now we have hundreds of students to apply to Morris Brown College. Right now. Once they find out, um, you you know, that we're not accredited, a lot of times they don't come, they decide to go somewhere else. But I am very um, uh, sure that once we get our accreditation back, the floodgates are going to open. So I'm preparing for that. We will use online learning, both asynchronous and synchronous, um, to to address that challenge. And that is how we're going to start. Now, as we um, build up our enrollment and are able to get our our, our feet um, uh, grounded under, under our feet, so to speak, you know, um, we'll look into potentially maybe building some dorms or whatever. But you know, right now. My focus is accreditation and fundraising, but we we will get to that. uh, We will get there when we get there, but uh, we will address the needs uh, of students probably utilizing technology. Okay. Derek, you have something before I go? Well, well, um, it's funny you mentioned technology because that is my, that's my forte. And it's great that you're going to implement that uh, as, as a, I guess you could say as a driving force in, generating interest in uh, bringing Morris Brown back because, as you know, online learning is growing. Uh, it's improving yeah. every year. Yes. So, you know, making that a big part of your draw, I think that's going to be great. Uh, I think it's going to definitely help in 
I guess, changing the narrative about Morris Brown because, yes, I'm one of those people who thought the cottage was closed. Uh, I did not know. I'm not around it enough to know. I, I knew right. that Morris Brown was on, on, on the comeback, and I was glad to know that someone like you, with your with your expertise, because looking at your resume, um, you have – you have been in a lot of different places. I mean, um, right. just looking at I mean, you're a graduate of Wentham University. So I'm familiar with Wentham University. A good friend of mine uh, played basketball for Wentham, uh, Shalada Winifers. I think she went to school okay. there when you were there. Okay, um, very good. Um, and then you um, graduated from the store College of Business at Troy, and then you also went to Harvard. Um, so your, your education and background, and also Nova Southeastern, um, and then of course Harvard again. So I mean, you ha- you have the educational experience, but then looking at your um, your career, I mean, you have you served a number of positions. You even worked at ITT, and me and you have that connection because I was an instructor at ITT, and a lot. Oh, and when ITT um, closed its doors. A lot of people criticized ITT, but they don't know. We put in work at ITT. Right, and, right. And, um, you know, I, I I taught my students. I made sure that they learned. So, you know, having right. ITT on your on your, on your your resume for me lets me know that you are a individual who works, likes to work directly with your students uh, and, and also with yeah. your employees because, to me, that's what ITT was when I was there. It was hands-on. Right. I got a chance to work with students of all age groups, uh, and I taught technology there. Um, so, um, you know, it was fun, and then it was an experience for me to just took me to another level in my life as far as getting a chance to work there. And then um, you've worked for Claflin, uh, Herzing University. I know I know a good bit about Herzing. Um, then 100 Black Men of America. I mean, yeah. that's one of the most well-known African American organizations across this country, um, those those gentlemen in each area, they are crucial to the success of their communities. Yeah, you know. And then you know now you're at Morris Brown, and you know I, I just think that it's great to have someone like you with your wealth of experience, with your wealth of people building and network building. I, I just think that you're the right person for this position uh, at Morris what? Brown to bring it back. Um and, and and you know keep the student keep the students and the alumni engaged because a lot of HBC alumni want what your alumni want they want to be kept in the loop they want information yeah. they love their school they don't want to be kept in the dark and with you running your uh, campaign as far as being the president the way that you're running it I think that's gonna bode well for your success and and the future of Morris Brown because when you have transparency. That's going to keep more people around, I think. What do you think about that, Dr. Yeah. J? Yeah, I, I, I think you're you're spot on. You know, regarding my career, you know, and my mother said this to me, and I, and I believe this, I would believe this as well. God literally ordered my steps to Morris Brown College. Um, all of my experiences, um, both uh, working in um, uh, higher education as well as the business realm, have prepared me to be a successful president for Morris Brown. You know, I... My diverse experience, having worked at different types of colleges, I think lends well for this position. You know, I worked at for-profit colleges, so, you know, I learned a lot about online learning, working with adult students. I worked at a two-year technical college. I even worked at an Ivy League school. So, you know, just that experience, is along with working, like you mentioned, with the 100 Black Men of America, 100 Black Men of Atlanta, you know, it all is like a beautiful um, uh positioning for this position and so uh again god bless blessed me and ordered my steps here and i feel like he sent me here to 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 do this great work we're going to restore the school i'm going to work with my team and and we're going to do it together as a team to to uh to build up uh morris brown college yes indeed got me excited i'm very excited can't wait to see um how this how your vision comes to fruition thank you kels Okay, so Dr. James, I know this has been a question repeatedly, and I think I heard you mention it. The legendary Herndon Stadium. What yeah. is going to happen with Herndon Stadium? 
Like, I, I did. Literally, I was like, I want to go running. I want to go out there and I want to exercise. Somebody's like, go to her and just say, I was like, okay, so that really is closed. I can't go out there running. But what is going to what what is the state of Herndon Stadium? What is going to become of Herndon Stadium? Yeah, just quite frankly, I don't know. We no longer own Herndon Stadium. Um, you know, w- one of those um, hurdles that we had to jump over was our financial position, and you know, we had to sell a lot of our assets and our land, and so we no longer own the stadium. Um, and so the city of Atlanta slash Invest Atlanta owns that. I don't know what they're going to do with it. Now, I've had several professional teams reach out to me in regards to that stadium, and I had had to quite frankly tell them that, you know, yeah, I agree with you. I would want it too. <laughs> but, uh, right. you know, we, 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 don't ha- we don't have ownership. We don't own it anymore. And so I don't know what the city is going to do with it. Um, maybe one day, uh, if it's still sitting over there and we're back in our rightful place, Maybe we might be able to make an offer and get it back. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. I mean, that would that would be the uh, when I say that would be the, the most that would be the awesome thing for people that hadn't saw or saw the movie. Tell them that we are rising. It actually goes in and it shows her in the stadium, and of course, it yeah. goes back to the, the March and Wolverines. It shows that, and that's like one of the most touching parts of that of that actual film for me because you see schools that were and schools that that are no longer and i can remember as a kid uh morris brown playing alabama and because i'm from huntsville so i can remember morris brown traveling to huntsville alabama and us playing at milton frank stadium on a 12 o'clock one o'clock on a saturday and you were just like you like okay here come morris brown and the march of wolverines and i had a couple of friends that actually marched as drum majors at right. morris brown so just going back to that and just thinking about that, you just want to see that come full, you know, full circle. And I, I do, even when Morris Brown has homecoming, I still go out and I participate because they still have the same pride that they have as if, Absolutely. you know, it's, it's full circle. They still have the same uh, pride. So that's my next question. Homecoming. What yeah. do you guys have planned for homecoming? Yes, actually, we have our homecoming committee meeting this week where we're going to actually sit down and plan um, what we want to do. Um, as we plan, uh, we're going to have, a you know, I'm the type of leader where I, I like to get a lot of input from other individuals. But as we plan, um, I want to say that this year we're going to party with a purpose. Homecoming this year is going to be um, very purposeful in the sense that we're going to have a fun, we're going to party. But we're going to raise money and dollars that we need purposefully to uh, go into our endowment for um, for our accreditation application. And so we're going to need to raise a lot of money this year. And homecoming is one of the best times for us to do it. Um, I want homecoming to be the biggest this year um, in recent years. And so uh, I'm going to be asking all of the alums to come full in a, uh, full in force this year for homecoming. And so we're going to have a really good time. Keep your ears open on our website, and uh, you'll see information out about our homecoming activities. Okay. Now, now that we've crossed the homecoming hurdle, let's talk about the commencement. I see that Dominique Wilkins is going to be the commencement speaker on yes. day 18. Talk about that and how exciting that is. It has to be pretty exciting. Oh, that's it's very exciting. You know, um, when I started looking for a commencement speaker, I wanted someone – who was going to be able to come in and give a, a very strong message to our students um, um, in regards to business and going out into the world and bettering themselves and overcoming adversity, all of those things. And so we are literally steps away from the Mercedes-Benz Stadium and the State Farm Arena. And so I thought, what better than one of the greatest NBA players in the history of the game the vice president of uh, basketball operations at um, the Atlanta Hawks to be our speaker. And so I reached out to him and he agreed and very, very excited about what he's going to bring to our commencement. And a lot of individuals are excited to hear, uh, hear a message from him. So we look forward to, to, uh, to seeing him in a few weeks. Derek. Well, I, I think that's a great choice. I mean, I grew up watching the human highlight film, uh, Dunk the Basketball, uh, him against Michael <laughs> Jordan. Uh, I, I think oh, yeah. he's going to bring a message, you know, that's going to excite like he did on the basketball court. 
um, is going to definitely bring about a lot of excitement being who he is. Uh, the kids being able to go and Google him and see his athletic exploits uh, on the basketball court. And um, just for him to just to convey, um, you know, the hard work that you put in to earn a degree, you know, it, it isn't, you know, exactly, um, it's going to take you many places. So, you know, I mean, who would have thought that Dominique Wilkins would come back to come to Morris Brown and be given a commitment speech? I mean, that's where his career has taken him uh, from dunking a basketball to making basketball decisions to come back to, to coming back to his the, the city and where he, you know, as far, as far as built his career and legacy to impart wisdom in the next generation of HBCU students. I, I just think that's a great, a great thing. Um, and, and with you being technology, will that be live, live streamed? I would love to watch. Yes. Yes. We will have it live streamed. Absolutely. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so now now that you have the campaign going, I know we have a couple of places that you that you ask your alums to donate. You have what the eighteen eighty one. Tell us where they can find you on social media, how they can donate, how people can give back to Morris Brown. Sure. Well, first of all, you can follow me, um, Dr. Kevin James, on Facebook. Uh, you can go to my like page, Dr. Kevin E. James. Same on uh, Instagram and the others, Dr. Kevin E. James. And then regarding um, uh, Morris Brown College, please visit our website, www.morrisbrown.edu. We have a lot of different ways you can give to Morris Brown on our website. Uh, we have Cash App, which is dollar sign, Restore Morris Brown. Uh, we have text to give. We have, uh, you can use your credit card. You can send in a check. Um, but everything is listed there on the website, um, morrisbrown.edu, Cash App, dollar sign, Restore Morris Brown. And my, I guess my final question, Dr. Dr. James, T-shirts. When y'all going to get these T-shirts going? I got one T-shirt. I do got one. I did get one, <laughs> but yeah, I do we, want another one. Yes. Uh, we're, we're in the process right now of updating our website, and we're going to have our official vendor's information on the website where you can one-stop shop, go straight to our website and order a paraphernalia from Morris Brown. And so we're uh, actually working on that. Right now, we plan on having that up uh, within the next two to three weeks. Okay. Right. And right, you know, Here. you won't you won't Kels to wear your apparel because Kels is a little mini walking, talking future celebrity <laughs> in Atlanta and in sports. Period. Because she's everywhere. I, I look up; she has okay. articles written about her. Uh, look up; she got emails wanting people to come on and tell the, so she can tell her story. She's definitely someone you want supporting Morris Brown. You know, and, and even though she didn't go to Morris Brown. I mean, she supports HBCUs with a passion that I have never seen. That's why I'm here with her, um, you know, on Black College Experience with her. And, you know, she has an interest in every HBCU. You don't see that too often. Most people, okay. you know, take their HBCU and take their ball and go home. Kel takes her HBCU and then says, I'm going to share my love with all of y'all. So um, it's definitely, it's def she's definitely someone uh, that's going to be a force in as far as you know representing HBCUs and just preaching her her message and her passion. So you know, get her a shirt. She's definitely going to wear it everywhere she Wonderful. goes. We'll buttons, pictures. I mean, she's a walking marketing uh, marketing person to me. Wonderful. We'll def we'll make sure that happens. And dear, have any more questions? I don't think I have any more no. questions. Uh, I, 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 like I said, he's he's giving me a brief history lesson of Morris Brown, educated me. I'm excited to see, you know, how you're going to restore the school, how it's going to look, you know, as far as academically, and then of course athletically, and then of course um, with the band, um, because we know HBCUs. Yes, we are academic institutions, but we 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 show out on the football fields, hard hard course, and we show out when it comes to the to the band. So can't wait to see how Morris Brown comes back, you know, restoring it like you're gonna do. It's just I'm just excited. Wonderful. Well thank you so much for, for those words and uh, we just uh appreciate your support and uh anyone who, want, who wants to help us out there please visit our website morrisbrown.edu. 
And we thank you once again, Dr. James, for joining us. Um, again, thank I did, you. like I said, I sat in on the interview. So I was like, hey, this is my opportunity to hop in and see if I can get an interview with Well, So I do appreciate you for saying yes to that. I was like, let me hurry up and get on it. Let me hurry up and get on it because you have, you have been busy. And to your Morris Brown family, we put the information out. And I think they even tagged V103 talking yeah. about you being on right. And so everybody knows. They're like, okay, Dr. James has been everywhere. And you have, you have been on force. You have been on interview after interview after interview after interview. And you've been working. You've been working, I say, in 60 days. Now you've done a lot of work in 60 days, more in 60 days than some people have done in 10 years. But that's another conversation. Oh, I appreciate you. But, uh, <laughs> Thank you. But we do appreciate you again, uh, Dr. James, for coming on. Derek always says, now your family, that's his line. Well, but you. anytime you feel like coming on and you want to come on and discuss anything with us, you are free to call in and talk with us. Sure. Well, just, anytime you want me on the show, please let me know, and I will reach out to you as well. Thank you so much. We'll do. Thank, thank you. you, Dr. James. You have a good evening. You all have a great day. All right. Bye-bye. I'm you, Doc. Wow, Kills. I mean, he's amazing. Uh, as, like I said, I didn't, even, I didn't read every position he's done in his career. I mean, but he, when you look at someone that has, you know, been all the places he's been and had the success that he's had, led the positions that he's had, and for Morris Brown to be having the issues that they were having, like I said, when he was on the interview, I think he is definitely the right person for this job. I mean, with his wealth of experience working in different types of, of academic learning environments, institution types. Uh, I mean, you have someone that's that well around it. Right. He's a no brainer. He, <laughs> right. And he said something that made a lot of sense. He said, everywhere that I've gone has helped me, has helped prepare me to be the president of Morris Brown. And I remember him talking in the interview with Maceo and, and, and Emmanuel talking about how he knew within a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds that he knew he wanted to be. As soon as they posted, he knew he wanted to be the president, the next president of Morris Brown. So, you know, he he has, he has a whole a long list of accolades. But one of the things is he started out going to South Carolina State. He was at South Carolina State. So, you know, it's his, his list of, I mean, list of things that he has done and the connections and the network is, is just so wide and so many things. And I mean, and being that he's only 41 years old, he has done a lot of stuff in this short 41 year tour, this, for, this short time frame that he's been, you know, I guess like 20, 25 years or so in education. He's done a lot of stuff in this time frame. And I think he is just the, just the ultimate person for this position at Morris Brown. I, I, I agree with you, Kels. And I mean, it's, it's like I said, I can't wait. With me, with me being down here in Mississippi, you know, I'm gonna start being from Mississippi, living in Louisiana, and not having a chance to really be around Atlanta. And like I said, you're in a hotbed for HBCUs. I mean, you're right there, smack dab in the heart. So you're getting a chance to be there on the ground uh, while Morris Brown is coming back. And, you know, um, outside of, you know, knowing as an HBCU, my, my experience about Morris Brown was from the movie Drumline. I'm not I'm not ashamed to say that. I mean, because I've only been right. to Atlanta a few times um, right. passing through. So I was ignorant to the fact of, you know, the, the historic, um, you know, the, histor the history of Morris Brown uh, and also the problems that it's been having over the past couple of years right. that Dr. James is going to correct. I mean, Outside of seeing them, seeing Morris Brown on Drumline, I knew it was an HBCU. I knew it was in Atlanta. I, I did not know it was founded by African Americans. Um, so, yep. like I said, he gave me a brief history lesson, and I love history. So now I'm, I mean, I, I was already rooting for Morris Brown. Now, definitely, I feel more connected to them, uh, knowing that you know they were founded by African Americans. Uh, not to not to not to uh, throw any type of shade on my like HBCUs that were founded by uh, Caucasians. We're right. glad that uh, right. those individuals saw enough worth in African Americans in the time to found HBCUs. But it's a little right. different when it's founded by African Americans in that in the right. time for that it was founded in. So um, right, and for it to be and going through the problems that it's having, 
and now to be on the comeback. That's our story. <laughs> that's our history. You know, from the time right. we came over here off of boats to what we're doing in the community now to you being a woman in sports, to you excelling, uh, people not thinking you belong, to you showing that you belong. I mean, you can kind of connect your life and your career with Morris Brown, you know? Right. And I think a lot of times, you know, I, I, I'm not sure because I've never been to Mississippi Valley, but you've been to you've been to Southern, mm -hmm. and you know what we see. For people that have been to Alabama State, you know what they said, um, uh, Alabama a and I've been to, you know, just different colleges. And a lot of times, you know, I hear the um, – even in the AUC, I hear people say, oh, they're, you know, they're, they're in the hood. Well, people have to understand there was a point in time where those were the only places that allowed us. They were housed in those areas because those, we were the people that were going to those schools. So you can't just take the school out of the community. That's just where they sat because – that's who housed us, and that's who were attending those universities. So that's where they were. And I hear a lot of people say, and I was like, you know, you you, you go to school your own campus. It is what it is, but it, it is. It's uh, interesting to see this story unfold. And I've I've had many times. Now he said that they didn't own the stadium anymore. I didn't know that part. That I didn't know. But because we had this discussion the other day, and I I I mean, just watching, like I said, watching it from where it was and where it is now. It, you, it, sometimes you just move beyond tears because I've actually been back and forth to Morris Brown. Right, I've watched the towers, that. right? The, the the you know the towers, the the dormitories. It's like they they demolished, them. like he said, two feet from from um you know Mercedes Benz. So it's it's hard to watch that. And it's like you're erasing history when you know the AMEs and you talk about what was. And what is now? It's like you're trying to erase history, and there's so much history in Atlanta, and there's so much history in the AEC with Spelman, Morehouse, Morris Brown, and Clark Atlanta. In that circle, it's just so much history, and just to see all of that stuff and to see where it was, and to see what it, you know, it's it's just exciting to actually be a part of, and to say, okay, they're they're actually because I do, I follow it all the time too, just to see where they are and what they're going to do. So I'm excited. Um, for him, and I think you know he's he he has a, a big task, but I think he by no way, mean shape or fashion, is he going to fail. I think he's going to execute it, and I think he has a lot of people behind him moving him on to do. Right, I, I, I don't see I don't see no chance where he fails. The only chance, the only t right. the only reason he would fail is if the alumni don't get behind him, and with his plan to be transparent. Uh, PP, are you still there? Yeah. We know at Mississippi Valley State how not having a transparent administration can affect alumni participation and alumni giving, alumni donations, just alumni happiness overall. Yeah, we love our school, but if we if you're not transparent with us, how can you expect us to just give us our give you our hard earned money, even though we love our school? Being transparent is the best way to be uh, when you're in an institution of higher learning. Uh, so HBCUs across the nation, take a lesson from Morris Brown. Be transparent. Let your alumni donors in, uh, even the ones who don't donate as much. If you want them to start donating, share information, share the vision, share the wealth, share the direction that the university is going in because that is going to be the key to Morris Brown getting back to where it needs to be, to getting back to where it used to be, Kells. And just they have a leader that I think is going to get them there. And I think a lot of times that's, that's one of the things that we all look forward to. We all look we all look at it. Even Coach Brady talked about it last, last right. week. You know, you talk about, you know, how you have, administration you talk about how we're still stuck on something that happened 20 years ago 30 years ago something that happened in financial aid right. something that happened and, and he, when he said that i was laughing because i I hear people still say that that's from my generation i was at southern in 99 you talking about 20 years ago and you got people that still say the same thing i'm not giving back because of something that happened or something didn't do or they didn't do and we all know over the course of time i don't know about mississippi valley but i know southern has gotten better with 
finding ways to connect you, have you update stuff, and they're reaching out for you because if they want some money, they're going to find you. They have gotten better with that, but it, it's in every situation, you have to be transparent, and, and all our universities suffer with that at some point. We don't tell people what's going on, and we, we all feel the same way. I'm not giving you money if I don't know what it's going towards or I don't know what you're doing with it because if you got a shady past, then I'm going to have some questions about it. And I don't care if it's $10. That's just how we operate. That's how the mind operates. So, you know, like you said, they love their school, but they want to know where their money going. And they have every right. They have every right. When you have mismanaged funds and things that happen of that nature, then, of course, people are going to start to question your character and what you're doing with their money. Definitely. PP, before we get ready to get out of here, what do you think about Dr. James and, and his you know, plan to restore uh, Morris Brown? Uh, all I say is, uh, well, I've been to Atlanta. I know that, what is it? Well, valid connection to Atlanta. I mean, to Morris Brown, you know, Bonner. Remember Bonner? Anthony Bonner? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, you know, he played it. Yeah, he played this last year at Morris Brown. Okay. All right. Well, the, yeah. the, the Anthony Bonner is one of our fraternity brothers. No, no, I, did, I didn't know that. So, you know, so, yeah, we have we have a familiar connection to Morris Brown now through Anthony Bonner. Uh, I'm not going to say his yeah. middle name. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah, uh, it just, uh, at the AUC, it just ain't, it hasn't, it just hasn't seemed right, you know, since. Morris Brown went through their hard times, you know. Uh, as you said, I know that, what is it, Morris Brown, they actually follow me on Twitter, so they got it. You know, they corrected me one time when I said <laughs> something about, I, it wasn't nothing shady, anything like that, but I said something about the fundraising or whatever, and they posted a couple of the articles about their path and trying to get accredited by 2020 and all that. But the AEC just ain't right, you know, without Morris Brown being back, you know, on the same level as those other schools. So I just want to see them come back and be great. Exactly. All right. Kels, anything else? And I, I, I like you said, I agree. And it, it is because it's like the missing, it's like the missing component. You, like people, if you've never like been to a, like you've never been to a AUC um, homecoming. I did an AUC homecoming where they did Clark Atlanta film and Morehouse homecoming on the same day. And you're talking about chaos. It's chaos in the city. It was so crazy, but it was so much fun because all you had to do was walk from one block to the next block. So everybody was walking from one squad to the next squad. You just walk into another field. At that particular time, I went to Clark Atlanta's football game. So everybody was coming from Morehouse. To Clark Atlanta. So you got all the, you got, of course, Spelman and Morehouse would be like the sister brother. So all of them are coming together. You got all the Greek. It was just a crazy experience. So now imagine adding Morris Brown back into that equation. Now you got super chaos. But it, it is. It's a, it's a great thing. But I think that's all I got. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Um, with, this is the end of our show. Make sure you tune in next week. Because I don't think we have, I, I don't have a guest for next week. So I guess we're going to be talking all sports recapping all the championship action uh, from this week. I mean, we got a lot to talk about next week as far as winning championships, uh, championship performances. I, I can't wait to see. You know me. I, I love to see these kids do well, uh, talking about the, the athletes, the scholar athletes. And, of course, with it being graduation season, just, you know, um, cherishing what these young men and women have done in their four to five years walk on the campus of an HBCU wherever you choose to go to and graduate from making that final walk uh, to get that to get that degree I just want to say congratulations to you it, it brings me back to when I graduated from Valley um, you know I have the picture that I have with my mom uh, on the day that I graduated method that's the only picture that I have from my graduation I, I lost a lot of my uh, Valley uh, pictures and hit and, and uh, memories in the flood of 2016. Uh, but I have the picture that I took with my mom and that's one of the most cherished days of my life. The day that I graduated from my HBCU of uh, Mississippi Valley State University. 
So uh, on that note, um, we are out of here. Kels, PP. Okay. So, okay, so before we go, we're not on next week because next week is Mother's Day. Oh, yeah. The following week. All right. It's the following week. So we'll see y'all the following week. Oh, Kels always week. has to correct me with that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like the week run together. But, of course, you want to tell them who's coming on the following week on May 19th? Um, we could do it together because we have a connection with this guy. He used to play for your team, the Saints. He played for my team, the Chiefs. Uh, I, I'm not going to lie. He was a thorn in my side when he played for the Saints because he didn't give a, he didn't hardly give away any sacks. But when he came to the Chiefs, I was like, <laughs> yeah, I, our quarterback don't have to worry about getting sacked now. The incomparable NFL Hall of Famer, Kale, you finish it off. Well, we have none other, the one and only <laughs> Willie Roth coming to the show on May 19th. This will be the first time we did some. I'm sorry. It's pronounced Roth? That's how I pronounce oh, it. Oh, I, I don't know I've how been pronouncing how, it wrong. I'm like, let me make sure I say his name right. <laughs> and you know what? I think we all say it differently. I, I don't necessarily know exactly how this is how i pronounced it okay but I, yeah because you know we all have a, <laughs> in a different way that's how even with bowie bowie we, it's a, oh, i yeah. don't know i've been killing we, we, <laughs> for years until you got me right <laughs> we have willie ralph coming of course like he said this, this is an nfl hall of famer he played for both the new orleans saints and the kansas city chiefs so we do have that connection we're excited yes. to have him on um, this was, I don't, I can't even tell you how big this was and how yes. big this will be, but, um, I'm like, all right, we, now we're moving on to hall of famers. We, we moving in a different, we moving different. So right. we uh, stay with us, stick with us. We go on. I mean, Cause places, I'm going to save the story for how, for how, um, how well, do we, we have time. Like when I saw that inbox, so, I couldn't believe my eyes. I was like. I went to the page to make sure we weren't getting spammed. Then I messaged you. I said, Kels, look, look who messaged us. Like we normally it's us reaching out. Right. Willie Rowe reached out to us. And that just lets that that lets you know, Kels, that what you're doing, people are taking notice. When someone like Willie Rowe takes notice of what you're doing, I mean, that speaks volumes. And then, like I said, he he reached out to us, and I was so excited, and I, I was speechless. I, I've been sharing the posts uh, on my social media pages, and most definitely, hopefully, we'll have some Kansas City Chiefs listening fans listening because I shared it all over the Chiefs network, uh, and and they they're excited. They're like, "Oh, we're gonna tune in. We're gonna check it out." You know, um, you know. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing what his message is, what his platform is. Um, hearing his story and just marveling at the man, his career, Mr. Willie Rowe. I am too. Um, I, I have. I've shared it in all of my New Orleans Saints or two of my New Orleans Saints groups, and I have to share it again. Of course, as time gets closer, but right. um, that I do. I still remember that day. That day that you told me, I was actually in Walmart shopping, and. Um, you know, it's, it's times like this when you really think that you're not doing enough, but you're doing more than you, you're doing more than you ever could do. When I right. think we're not doing enough, somebody else sees what we're doing. And like I tell people, it's always for the athlete. It's always for the athlete's purpose. It's always for the athlete to shine. And so even if we never made a dime off of it, it's always going to be to the benefit of athletes. And it's times like this when you see stuff like this happen is when you're like, okay, I know that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing because it's people that's been around longer than us that can't say that they've interviewed or are going to interview an NFL Hall of Famer. Or that he reached out to them first, you know. And exactly. Hopefully, hopefully, and PP, pray with me, hopefully we'll be to get our chapter frat, another NFL Hall of Famer, you know, Jerry Rice, to be a guest on the show. Um in the whole weekend. Jerry Rice come on the show. I'm just gonna faint. I'm gonna faint. I'm, I'm just gonna faint. <laughs> you know, so hopefully I'm not gonna you know, be on the phone. We, we I'm can, gonna faint can, that day. We can get him on. I mean, with with him having two of his chapter frat, you know, uh, talking about HBCU sports, 
you know, hopefully that'll be enough for him to be like, you know what, I'm a, I'm a, you know, on, on the shield, I'm gonna come on and uh, you know, talk sports with y'all because you know, he's an HBCU legend, and that's what we propose. That's who we boost up is HBCUs, the next HBCU legends getting drafted and signed into the NFL. Um, you know, hallelujah. But um, I'm ready to get out of here, Kels. Ready? We ready to roll? All right. All right. We out of here, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good night. Good night.